Hello everyone and welcome back to The Learning Nook. Today is Martin Luther King Day and I think it is important for us to talk about who he was and exactly why we celebrate this day. And along with looking at different resources you can use in your home and your classroom. So let's dive right in. Martin Luther King Jr. was a civil rights activist in the 1950s and 60s. He led nonviolent protests to fight for the rights of all people, including African Americans. He hoped that America and the world could form a society where race would not impact a person's civil rights. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is a holiday celebrated in the United States, which honors the achievements of everything he did, including leading the civil rights movement in the United States. He also encouraged the use of nonviolence as a way to end segregation. He played a large part in the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which outlawed several types of discrimination. Martin Luther King was also awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. He is most famously known for his I Have a Dream speech, which I will add in a little clip right here that I got off YouTube. This speech really tugs on your heartstrings and makes you have empathy for the situation and what African American people are going through. This can help us understand what it was like to live through in that time and feel those feelings we may have never felt before. Sadly, King was assassinated on April 4th, 1968. Almost immediately after his death, there were calls for a national holiday in his honor. Beginning in 1970, many states and cities made his birthday, January 15th, a holiday. In 1983, the government passed a law making the third Monday in January a day dedicated to honoring the memory of Martin Luther King Jr. The day is usually celebrated with marches and with speeches by civil rights and political leaders. I got all of this information from kidsbritannica.com, which gives great information about Martin Luther King as a fan and a fantastic resource for you and your family to use. So after hearing a little bit about who Martin was, I think it's important to talk about resources you can get. And I'll tag a bunch at the end here and chat a little bit about books directly related to him and articles related to different lessons, but I want to focus on the ones I have here today. So even though I don't have an exact book that is about Martin Luther, I see that a lot of different things he represented are represented in books that I already have. Like this first one, this is just a simple book about the ABCs of kindness, and he, that is something he wanted for our world, is for us to be kind to others, and that's kind of what this book shows and talks about. On top of being kind to one another and fair, this was another book that I found that I thought spoke true, which is a book about empathy and talking about us as human beings. This is a really fantastic book. It talks about that. I am human, but being human means I am not perfect and I make mistakes. It talks about how we are all full of possibilities, and I think that was something that Martin Luther King really wanted to touch on in his speeches. And he wanted to show that even though we're all human and we're all different, we all have a love inside for one another. So these two books are showing just little pieces of who he was and what he wanted for our world. So even though they don't directly say Martin Luther King Jr. on them, that doesn't mean we couldn't combine these into a lesson about what he taught. So this next book I want to talk about is a great resource for upper elementary students. It is called The Bell Rang by James E. Ransom. It's a fantastic book that kind of gives you an insight into what it was like for these children living as slaves on a plantation. And even though, again, it doesn't necessarily say anything about Martin Luther King, he fought for the rights for African Americans. And this kind of ties into the struggles in places where a lot of them knew their great grandparents or people came from. The reality of today is to recognize the oppressions that these people went through. So 
this is a fantastic book to kind of let the children have empathy for those situations and different oppressions that different people went through. The fact of the matter is that even though that maybe we don't see this exactly in a day-to-day -day basis, maybe in our own community, that doesn't mean that oppressions like this aren't happening around the world. It is still occurring today and it's important to talk about and teach our children about. A lot of people are worried to talk about serious topics with children because they think they can't understand it, but in fact they can and in, it's important for us to create an educated world full of great humans and that starts with children. So let's dive in with the bell rang. And I have to know that it has beautiful illustrations to go along with the feelings that each character is having. So the bell rang. Monday. The bell rings and no sun in the sky. Daddy gathers wood. Mama cooks. We eat. Mama kisses me. Daddy hugs me. My brother Ben touches my shoulder. Goodbye. They walk to the fields with the overseer and Master Tucker's other slaves. I go with Miss Sarah May and all the young uns. Tuesday. The bell rings. Daddy gathers wood. Mama cooks. We eat. Mama hugs me and Daddy's rough hands slide down my arms. Ben waves goodbye. They walk to the fields with big hopes for chopping. I skip to Miss Sarah May's with all the young'uns. Wednesday. The bell rings. Daddy gathers wood. Mama cooks. We eat. Mama kisses me. Daddy touches my neck with rough hands. Ben surprises me, first with a kiss on the cheek, then whispering, Goodbye. In my ear, from behind his back, he hands me a real pretty doll. Ben runs to catch up with his friends, Joe and little Sam. They walk to the field. I run to Miss Sarah May's. The doll is made of twisted sticks and fancy cloth. That must have come from the master's house. I love it. And name it Ms. Ida after Mama. We jump rope together. We play hide and seek. Ms. Ida hides with me. We hop scotch together. I care for and hug Miss Ida all day. Thursday. I wake to the sound of Mama and Daddy searching, looking. No sun in the sky. Mama crying. No Ben. Daddy crying. Ben ran. We cry. We cry. Overseer comes to our cabin. Then dogs come. Overseer hits Mama. Then Daddy. I hide. Ben gone. Joe and little Sam all ran. Mama cries. All the way to the field. Daddy's face looks all wrong as he walks with the other slaves, many with mad looks, some with tears. Overseer has his gun. I walk to Miss Sarah May's. I cry all day. Friday. Bell rings. Daddy gathers wood. Mama cooks. We're quiet. I can't eat. I hold Miss Ida at Miss Sarah May's, but I don't talk or play. Saturday. Bell rings. Daddy gathers wood. Mama cooks. We eat. I kiss Mama and Daddy goodbye. Short work day. They stop when the sun is high. We think of Ben's smile. We talk of Ben. Ben's touch. We miss him. We hope he's free, like the birds. I work with Mama in our garden. Daddy off fishing. Dogs! That's dogs barking! Horses! That's horses running! 
Ben, I yell. Slaves come from all over. Mama puts her arms around me. Master Tucker rides in. Overseer rides in. The dogs are barking at Joe and little Sam. No Ben. And little Sam. No Ben? They go to the tree. Out comes the whip. All night we cry and pray for Ben. Sunday. No bell. We eat. We walk with all of Master Tucker's slaves to the creek. Big Sam preach. He preach of Moses. He preach of being free. We sing. We hope. We pray. Ben made it. Free like the birds. Free like Moses. No more bells. Monday. So I love this book because the little bird kind of gives you an indication that maybe someday she could be free as well. So I know that book was a little bit than ones we've read here on the Learning Nook, but that doesn't mean that it's not important to talk about and read with your students. Again, I would say that this is for upper elementary students who could understand the information laid out in the book a little bit more than kids who are younger and maybe have not had experiences with any of this conversation before. So going forward, I would like to quote Martin Luther King on his famous quote, the time is always right to do what is right. So as we think and reflect on all of his actions on this day, we should take his words with us every day and try to all be better humans. I can't wait to see you all next time on The Learning Nook. Have a great rest of your day. As I promised, here are a few different Martin Luther King Jr. books you could buy. The most important thing I recommend is quality over quantity. So it doesn't matter if you have 100 books, just make sure you have ones that are worth reading. Along with that, here are a few different lessons I found online that can give you some great resources. Personally, I would use this worksheet on having children relate to Dr. King's I Had a Dream speech for America. They would write about what his dream was or a snippet of it and then write about what their dream is for America. So it can relate more to them rather than just writing, you know, a reflection. So here's a few resources, and again, we'll see you next time on The Learning Nook.